Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we will be finding out the indices for the directions in the cubic unit cell. As you can see here that we have a quite a few directions in this cube and we will be finding out the indices for all of these directions. In previous video, we calculated the indices for direction A, which is this direction and um, then we calculated the indices for direction b in this video we'll be finding out the indices for direction c as you can see here and in next video we'll be calculating it for the direction d i link all these videos in the description box as well as in comment section you can check them out let's quickly get started with direction c in this video let's zoom into the direction c as you can see here to see where its scale is lying and where is its head so that um, we may see it and here is the direction and we can see that the tail of this direction is located at this plane okay it's located at this plane the front plane the front wall you can say it's like a room and the front wall of the room that is facing you this is the wall and the tail of the vector is located at the roof at this point at its roof um, of this wall okay and its head is also located at the same plane but a different location that initial analysis will help us to imagine the direction in a better way now first of all we should look at the steps that we are going to follow in order to find out the indices for the directions in cubic unit cell the steps for finding out the direction in hexagonal crystal system is entirely different okay so the steps that i'm going to mention is only applicable for the directions in cubic unit cell all right so keep that in mind and now let's have a look on those steps i am just gonna write them these are the steps that we have to follow in order to find out the indices for the directions in cubic unit cell and the first and most important step is to define the coordinate system directions are always given inside a cube so we have to define the coordinate system like what is the x-axis y-axis and z-axis inside that cube and this as origin is the most conventional and frequently used origin so that uh, this is the positive x-axis this is the positive y-axis and here vertically upward is the positive z-axis okay and we can see here they have already defined the coordinate system for you so you don't have to in most of the cases it happens that the problem that is given to you they have already defined the coordinate system so you can work really well with that coordinate system uh, but if it is not given that you have to do it yourself and this point as origin that one that i showed you people as origin is the uh, is my favorite point as origin because it's really convenient all right and uh, I'll, su I'll suggest you to uh, take it as a region so that this is the positive x-axis as you can see and uh, positive y-axis and positive z-axis so the first step is to define the coordinate system and the second step is to find out the tail coordinates and the three have to find out the tail coordinates now what we mean by coordinates coordinates are the points uh, that tell us where that location is whose coordinates you want to calculate for example we want to calculate the coordinates of tail of direction c so we want to find out that starting from origin what motions we have to make along x y and z direction to reach to the tail point okay it's just like a map like how much motion you have to do one unit along x two unit along z and uh, zero unit for example along y and we we'll reach the tail point this is just like a map as you are making some a person understand that where that location is so you have to find out the tail coordinates with respect to region with respect to region means starting from region what motions you have to make along x y and z direction to reach to the tail point for example okay let's see how we are going to do this and um, we can see here that the coordinate system is quite um, obvious so let's see how we are gonna do this and we have this point as origin as you can see and we want to reach to this point which is the tail point and for that purpose what I'm gonna do is that uh, I'll move one unit along x direction okay 
one unit means to from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction okay that direction should be along axis or parallel to one axis only not to multiple axis okay as you can see that it was wholly along the x direction so i move from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell along x direction so that would be taken as one if i travel half of it half of this distance and it will be taken as one by two okay so all these motions are calibrated based on uh, what fraction of one corner to the other corner of the unit cell motion we have uh, you know traveled okay so um, here we can see that we travel one unit along the axis x axis direction so it's one along x direction then uh, since it's vertically upward so we we'll move one unit along the z direction which means to the other corner of the unit cell along the x direction so this is the point one and after that uh, we can see that it's further away at this point okay as you can see if i move along this line which is parallel to the y direction so i will reach to the tail point of direction c see okay, what happens with the as we have calculated the tail coordinates which are um, 1 for x direction half for y direction because we write in this order that we uh, write the x coordinate first then we write the y coordinate and at the end we write the z coordinate so this is the order we write it but the motion could be followed in any direction okay uh, maybe you may start uh, moving in z direction first then in x direction and then in y direction to reach that point you just have to mention um, that what total amount of motion you have traveled in a certain um, axis direction uh, head coordinates of uh, c direction which is very very easy as you can see that starting from origin this is the origin point i'll move one unit along the x direction to the other corner of the unit cell which is this point and here we are at the head of the direction c uh, this is the head coordinates we can see they are super easy one for x okay we have to move one unit along x direction zero unit along y direction and zero unit along z direction these are the head and tail coordinates and uh, we have successfully followed the three of the steps and now we need to uh, do the subtraction phenomena and then we'll have some checking and we'll get the final indices so let's quickly um, do that here is the tail coordinates and here are the head coordinates so we'll subtract the final point from initial point so head is a final point of a vector and tail is this initial point so uh, we'll do that operation we'll write that uh, subtracting head head minus tail okay we will be doing this operation and we'll make three blocks one is for x subtraction the second will be for y subtraction and the third will be for z subtraction so how we'll be subtracting is that we'll take the x coordinate of head and x coordinate of tail we'll subtract them in this order head minus tail similarly for y and similarly for z so we can see it's one in head minus one for tail one minus one which gives zero okay so it's zero here then in y first we'll write head because it's first in order 0 minus 1 by 2 so it's minus 1 by 2 all right and for z 0 minus 1 which is equals to minus 1 and it's minus 1 here and we can see here that after subtraction we got some fractions and we have to remove those fractions and for that purpose we'll multiply the lcm of denominator with with each of these numbers okay with we got three numbers here corresponding to x y and z direction and uh, since there is a fraction involved so we'll remove that fraction by multiplying it by a suitable digit and that suitable digit is obtained by taking the lcm of denominators and we can see here in denominator we have two and none of other have any denominator so we'll take the lcm of two which is two again so we'll multiply each of these indices by 2 so you have to write it in neat form like for example when you're doing it on your paper so onwards okay after this uh, this things 
this thing this table continues and I'm writing the continued form here so we'll write multiplying by positive 2 you can never multiply a negative number okay you can't multiply a negative number um, you can only multiply a positive number that doesn't matter if it is negative whatever it is you can't change the polarity of original numbers okay so 0 multiplied by 2 minus 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1 multiplied by 2 so it's 0 here 2 to cancels out it's minus 1 here and it's minus 2 here now we can see here that there is no fraction involved and another thing that you have to check that whether it is in least integer form or not okay and you can check it out by seeing that whether these numbers could be reduced to a to a less number by dividing it by a suitable digit such that fraction doesn't involve for example if we would have got 242 okay 2 for x 4 for y and 2 for z then we can reduce it to a least number by dividing it by 2 okay it's 1 then 2 and 1 we can reduce it to a least number by dividing it by a suitable um, integer but here we can see that if we will divide anything by these numbers we will get a fraction so that is why these are the final indices it's in least integer form and uh, there is no fraction involved and these are the final indices so 0 1 bar and 2 bar enclosed in square brackets this is the representation for Miller indices of directions first you will write the x index then you will write the y index and then you will write the z index I mean, if, even if, if the number is negative then you will put a bar on that number while representing it in Miller indices form standard form okay so these this is a Miller indices form uh, you can even write it in this way like you can write it at, like that H K and L in some books they are generally represented by these numbers so you can write 0 1 bar 2 bar okay and there is no space between these numbers as long as uh, these numbers are single numbers okay sometimes what happens is that you may get 22 here okay it's minus 1 here and it's minus 2 here so how you are gonna represent it and for that purpose you have to put space between indices to show that they are distinct okay that space is needed to show that 22 is a separate number one bar is separate number and two bar is separate number okay and this is uh, when there is a two digit number involved you have to put space between each of these indices but if all of them are uh, single numbers okay then you don't need to put any space in between them i hope you understood it and We'll do the next direction, which is direction D next video. If you have any queries, you can ask me in comment section. Goodbye.